Are you confused about the COVID-19 vaccines? Do you worry about reactions and side effects? Are you scared that your headache diagnosis or headache treatments could stop you from getting vaccinated? Let's talk about the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines and your headaches on this episode of The Headache Channel. Welcome back to The Headache Channel. I'm Dr. Alexander Krobe. I'm a full-time, board-certified headache medicine doctor, and I've helped thousands of people just like you living with headache live better. On this episode of The Headache Channel, we will answer your questions about the COVID-19 vaccines, including how they relate to your headache treatments. And at the end of this episode, you'll come with me and watch as I get my first and second dose of the Moderna COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. Before we get started, please give this video a like, and please take a moment to subscribe to The Headache Channel. It's free, and it shows YouTube and the rest of the world that people living with headache matter. Before we talk about vaccination, let's get on the same page about infection and immunity. You probably already know that almost all infectious diseases are caused by either bacteria or viruses that invade your body and try to take over. These invaders use your body's resources to reproduce, and they reproduce really quickly. The natural way your body fights these invaders is the immune response. When a specific virus or bacteria invades your body for the first time, your body's immune system takes a while to respond. If the response is not fast enough or effective enough, the invader can take over and make you really sick or even kill you. After your body successfully fights an infection, your immune system keeps a memory of how to fight that specific virus or bacteria in the future. When the same bacterium or virus tries to invade again, your immune system is faster and more effective. It stops the invasion before it can take over and before you get really sick. The idea behind vaccination is to give your immune system a memory of how to fight an infection without actually giving you an infection that would kill you. Early attempts at vaccination of smallpox is documented in China over a thousand years ago. Smallpox was a virus that killed three of every ten people it infected and blinded and disfigured many others. A thousand years ago, Chinese doctors tried giving people just a very tiny amount of actual smallpox in the form of powdered smallpox scabs. This type of vaccination, using actual smallpox, is called variolation. The problem with variolation is that 2-3% to of people who were vaccinated got full-blown smallpox and died, and they also passed smallpox on to others. So, although variolation was practiced by many cultures over hundreds of years, it's easy to see why the idea of variolation didn't go viral. The next breakthrough in vaccination was in 1796 by Edward Jenner, an English doctor. Jenner, so the story goes, was walking through a dairy one day and noticed that all the milkmaids had unblemished complexions. Not a pockmark to be found. Milkmaids were all exposed to cowpox, a similar but much milder cousin of smallpox. Jenner discovered that giving someone a weaker variety of a virus can protect them from smallpox. Today, we make weak versions of disease-causing viruses in a lab by growing them, choosing the weak ones, and repeating the process until we get a Goldilocks virus just strong enough to grow, but too weak to cause disease. This process takes many years to get just right. Examples of attenuated live viruses include polio, measles, mumps, and yellow fever. Another traditional approach to making vaccines is to inactivate or kill the virus. You grow the disease-causing viruses and then destroy them with heat, chemicals, or radiation so they can't cause disease. You inject the broken-up virus as a vaccine. It still takes a long time to safely develop inactivated virus vaccines, and you have to make sure that the virus has been completely killed. Another issue with inactivated vaccines is they don't get as much of a response from your immune system, so you need a booster shot. Examples of inactivated vaccines that you probably already know about include most flu shots, hepatitis A, and the rabies shot. Traditional vaccine manufacturing is slow, expensive, and unpredictable, but mRNA vaccine technology is just the opposite. So. What is an mRNA vaccine, how are they mass-produced, and how do they work? The part of the virus that triggers your immune system is usually a protein. In the case of the COVID virus, it's the spike protein. Your own cells are always constantly making proteins. So, if we could program your own cells to make spike proteins for just a little while, we could teach your immune system to detect and fight COVID. mRNA, or messenger ribonucleic acid, is a set of instructions that tells your cells what protein to make. All you need is some fancy modern science to find the code for the COVID spike protein and then assemble the mRNA code in mass quantities. Old-fashioned vaccines were made of proteins grown by yeast, bacteria, animal or human cells in a petri dish, or in the case of the flu vaccine, in chicken eggs. Not only does that take a while, it means that old-fashioned vaccines often contain bits of other proteins made by those cells that could trigger unwanted reactions. You may have been told that you can't have the flu vaccine because you're allergic to eggs. 
mRNA vaccines can be made and manufactured by machines in mass quantities in weeks, not years. An mRNA vaccine delivers just the code for the protein, and your body does all the rest. To help the mRNA get inside your cells, it's packaged in microscopic oil bubbles called liposomes or lipid nanoparticles. These liposomes can merge with your cells similar to how oil bubbles join together in your pasta water. When the liposome merges with your cells, the mRNA enters your cells and your cells start running the program and making the spike protein. Your immune system detects these proteins and generates an immune response and a memory of how to fight COVID in the future. After a few days, your cells destroy the spike protein mRNA and the process stops. With mRNA vaccines, the only things that are used are mRNA, the oils, some salts and sugars, and polyethylene glycol. There are no preservatives, and this is one reason why the mRNA vaccines have a limited shelf life and have to be kept very cold. Remember, there's no actual virus, so there's no chance of getting sick or making other people sick. The other advantage of mRNA vaccines is that it's relatively easy to change the programming. So when a virus mutates, as we are seeing with the COVID-19 virus, we can quickly reprogram the vaccine to keep up. Right now, there are two mRNA vaccines for COVID-19, Pfizer and Moderna. The Pfizer vaccine is approved for people 16 years and up. You get two shots in your shoulder, 21 days apart. It's around 95% effective. Side effects include fatigue and headache, injection site pain, and flu-like symptoms, all of which get better on their own. The Moderna vaccine is for people 18 and older. You get two shots in your shoulder, 28 days apart. It's also around 95% effective. Side effects are similar, including injection site pain, swelling and redness, and flu-like symptoms, all of which get better on their own in a few days. Because these two vaccines are very similar, you're probably going to be offered a vaccine based on availability. Remember, the vaccines are not mix and match, so if you start with the Moderna vaccine, your second dose has to also be the Moderna vaccine. Same for Pfizer. Now that you know how these vaccines work, let's talk about some rumors going around the internet. Have you heard the one that says you can't get Botox within two weeks of your COVID shot? Or the one about the COVID shot and the injectable CGRP antibodies like Amovig, Ajovi, Emgality, and Viepti? Let's bust these myths. According to current CDC guidelines, the only contraindication or reason you can't take the COVID mRNA vaccine is that you had a severe allergic reaction to that vaccine or the vaccine components in the past. Remember that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines actually have very few ingredients. There's the mRNA, the oils used to make the lipid nanoparticles, some salts and sugars, and polyethylene glycol, which is found in everything from food to baby wipes. Very few people have an allergic reaction to polyethylene glycol, but it does happen. And people who have an allergic reaction to polysorbate 80 can react to polyethylene glycol and vice versa. If you're one of those few people who have an allergic reaction to either polyethylene glycol or to polysorbate, talk with your doctor because it's still possible for you to get the COVID-19 vaccine safely. There are only two reasons that you should put off your COVID-19 vaccination. First, if you've had any other vaccination in the past 14 days. And second, if you've been treated for COVID with specific COVID monoclonal antibodies or COVID convalescent plasma treatment. You can get the COVID mRNA vaccine if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, and if you've had conditions like Bell's palsy, myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, cancer, or if you're immune suppressed. And remember, because the mRNA vaccines are very pure and have minimal ingredients, you can still get your shot if you're allergic to eggs or latex or if you have food or animal allergies. Remember, these guidelines can change, so always ask your doctor and refer to the latest CDC guidelines. I put a link in the description below this screen. To see what your COVID-19 vaccination could be like, come along with me as I get my shots. The first step is to read and sign some questionnaires and consent forms. They ask questions like, do you have any allergies to vaccines? And have you had or been exposed to COVID? This is the official CDC COVID-19 vaccination record card that you're supposed to complete, sign, and keep with you. After completing my paperwork, I head into the registration and vaccination area and hand over my papers to the registration staff. They enter my information into the computer and double check the information is correct. After waiting for just a few minutes, there's an open chair, and I sit down in front of a very helpful and friendly nursing student who confirms my identity and triple checks my paperwork. She enters more information into a tablet, and I also provide a digital signature. The Moderna mRNA vaccine is given into either deltoid, and I choose my left. This is an intramuscular injection using a 1 inch 25 gauge needle, and the injection amount is 0.5 milliliters. You could choose either shoulder, I chose my left. Three, two, one. 
wow, I didn't even feel like that. She's great. And just like that, it was done. Um, I really didn't feel anything, just a little bit of pressure. I think there was one drop of blood, she covered it with a Band-Aid, and I was good to go. I'm still wearing my mask because vaccine or not, we will still all have to wear masks and wash our hands frequently until the pandemic is over. After I got my shot, I got to put on this really cool t-shirt made for me by my best friend, Kaylee. But today isn't over because I still need to wait for 15 minutes while they observe me for any signs of a bad reaction to this vaccination. I was perfectly fine and I went home after the 15 minutes was up. So I hope that this episode has helped you feel more comfortable learning and seeing more about vaccinations in general, the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 mRNA vaccines in particular, and how they relate to your headache diagnosis and treatment. That brings us to the end of this episode of the Headache Channel. Remember, the Headache Channel is for information and entertainment only. It's not medical advice. If you need medical advice, please see your doctor. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like. Subscribe now and click the bell icon to be first to know about our latest episodes and check out these other helpful videos. I'm Dr. Alexander Krobe. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Headache Channel.